Hello, Robert Johnson. Hi, Cynthia Sykes Yorkin. Hampton Thatcher. Yes, Dave Bautista. Mackenzie Davis. Sylvia Hoops. Harrison Ford. <laughs> <laughs> you fucked it up! <laughs> <laughs> Did you do that? Ryan Gosling. Ron Gray. Emily Adams. Michael Green. Andrew Tessa. Well done, everybody. Hampton, I want to start with you. We're not, we're not going to go there. No, 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 no. no discussion about any plot points. Okay, so let's let, let's that's true. That's true. Who? Thank you for everyone who said that in here. Everyone gets that. Uh, there we get someone who's no. Their it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's, it's no discussion about. That's fine. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's it's like. Uh, over the years, as a filmmaker, I always felt that the press always respected the secret and the mystery of a movie. And I'm grateful for that. And for this one, I ask you to do the same thing, uh, not to spoil the pleasure of the audience. I, we worked hard to create a mystery, and I'm grateful if you can honor. I totally understand. I wasn't going to answer you anyway. <laughs> That's fine. It was raining. <laughs> it was raining. I was tired. I was happy with the uh, with the eventual the long term uh, eventual movie. Uh, a lot has uh, a lot has happened since then, but uh, it was a it was a remarkable experience working with Ridley and uh, Jordan Cronenberg and uh, the rest of the people involved in Hampton. Uh, uh, but. Uh, it's a long time ago, in a world far, far away. <laughs> um, well, it seemed like Harrison had so much fun on the original. It seemed like a great, uh, great time to be had. Um, no, I, I, it's it's a very unique opportunity. Uh, it's, it's it's such a wildly unique film. When I first saw it, I was 12, it had been out for 10 years, I thought I was just watching a science fiction movie, or, but what I experienced was something very different. And what's interesting about the film is not just the experience of watching it, but how it stays with you. I wasn't asking myself at 12 what it meant to be a human being, <laughs> but I, <laughs> I was after it. Uh, or maybe not consciously, but subconsciously, uh, those seeds were planted. And I realized how much influence it had, had on the culture that I grew up in. And so, uh, you know, then to read a script uh, that had such, you know, was a love letter in certain ways to the original, but was also very much its own thing. It was uh, respectfully, uh, carrying out the narratives and themes of the original, but at the same time introducing its own uh, conceptual ideas that still was massive in scale, but at the same time intimate, and personal, emotional. It's, this is an experience that's unique to, to Blade Runner and uh, um, a wonderful opportunity for me to be a part of something He arrived in a very uh, cinematic way. We heard Harrison had landed. We heard Harrison was coming to set. We heard Harrison had arrived. It was very dark. We lit. You could only distinguish people by their silhouette. Suddenly this very distinctive silhouette uh, appears, and steps into the light. And he looks at me a lot like that. <laughs> you know, like I'm, I was an eight-year-old kid who just broke his window. <laughs> and then immediately put us at ease because he's the best collaborator you could ever ask for. And um, brings with him the experience and the intent of making something great. And we all felt that and uh, felt like we could really begin to do that. Being a badass. <laughs> just. And 
what was so great about Denis, um, how he brings heart to the darkness. And that was such a, a nice caveat to feel so fierce as an authority figure, as a leader, as a lieutenant, needing to keep order and there's one mission and everybody needs to stay within those confines of that mission. But to also feel this undying affection and protection of this special boy, because he's so special and we don't want to break him. And if you break him, I'll kill you. You know, that, that was fun to play. You're talking about the character, right? <laughs> <laughs> so much. Okay, I'll talk about my son then. <laughs> I, uh, I really love, there's such a caste system in this world of, uh, that there's not like a lot of upward mobility and it can feel really confining, I think, but I, I really like that Mariette was sort of aware of being an underling and um, she just seems like this cheeky drowned rat who'd survived a, an apocalypse and um, I don't know, she was really fun to play. And then I got to be inside Anna, which was also <laughs> Really nice. <laughs> 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 I, I wasn't going to say it. I wasn't going to say it. I promise. Um, Anna, how about you? There's such a great connection between the two characters, your character and Ryan's. Yeah, um, that was a very incredible scene to, to do. It was very challenging, uh, technically speaking, because there were so many things that we, we never did before, and it was kind of like doing like a dance and we were kind of fighting against each other. No one wanted to be the second one because it was very difficult to repeat. And, and it was like very short beats um, and it was kind of difficult to continue with that emotion for so long. It was a scene that took us like three days to shoot. So it was very, um, very intense, but we, you know, it was kind of surreal that seeing it on screen because it's like, Someone's, you know, someone new is in there, so, yeah, it was really beautiful. Sylvia? No, I, I, I was astonished when I read the script and I saw this rich palette that I could play with um, and I felt very grateful. Um, I remember just having so much fun preparing and thinking, you know, these are all the possibilities. You know, what can I do with her? Where can we go, you know, on this journey? Uh, I felt, you know, <laughs> I felt very happy. It was the most fun character I, I'd ever played. <laughs> what, what are you assuming? Are you guys in a good place? Yes, I think Ryan owes me an apology. <laughs> Once Harrison apologizes to me, then I'll <laughs> um, You know, it's funny, because when I first got the role, I didn't realize uh, how important uh, the character was to the, the plot of the film. Uh, so I was pretty stressed out about having that pressure put upon me. <laughs> Feeling like, uh, you know, I was kind of, uh, uh, I don't know, the, the newbie uh, to the cast. But uh, no, I mean, I, I, I really, uh, I don't know, I'm proud to have, have earned the part and to be uh, part of this amazing movie. Well, um... Um, it's, it's a challenge in this, only in the sense that um, there's so much pressure, there's so much, um, it was so important to us to try to make the very best film that we could, and we knew that entailed putting, you know, Denis and Roger and all the other incredible artists in the best position to, you know, really achieve that art. And part of that, as Denis has spoken about so articulately over the past, past few days, is real sets, real props, the, the care, the love, the specificity that went into every little detail of the film really allows the artist to get in there and really create. And, and Denis has an incredible talent and, and really the ability to make magic with these artists when he's given the resources. So mine and Andrew's goal was to make sure that, to put them in the very best position that they could be in to achieve that art and to make sure that, you know, everybody got along. <laughs> <laughs> you've done some pretty large 
movies, I, I think, um, uh, you know, as far as building the actual sets, as it relates to the overall vision for the film, I think um, what's so special about the movie that he has made, and I think it's uh, what makes great science fiction great science fiction, is the humanistic quality of the film. And there are a lot of components that go into that. It's the extraordinary performances of the uh, actors up here on the stage. It's the script that Hampton and Michael wrote. I also think it's being able to live in a real universe with real sets, real physical props, the ability to, to improvise and, and, and whatnot, as opposed to working in a green screen environment, is a, is, you know, I would say it's the only component, but it's an important component of how Denis creates the very humanistic uh, movies that he does. And so, you know, he, he explained to me and brought her what he and Roger needed, and, you know, our job as producers is, is to give it to them. Well, we'd started over 12 years ago trying to get the rights untangled with a partner that was reluctant to see anything happen with Blade Runner. It had been so many years, so kind of had to talk him into that first, and uh, then uh, that took quite a while, and so finally we got the rights straightened out and were able to pursue it, and it was very important to us as a producing team to find people, uh, a company that would be uh, sensitive to and want to uphold the integrity of the film and continue the mythology in a way that, bridge that mythology in, a, in an important, meaningful way, so we, met Roderick and Andrew and Al Khan and established a wonderful relationship. My husband was really, really taken with them and thought they were fantastic and smart and talented. So we teamed up with them and they uh, really uh, took this movie all the way home and it's been such a great experience working with Denise and the talented Ryan and Harrison. And, and I think a special shout out to um, the wonderful women in this project uh, starting with Robin Wright, and we have Sylvia and Anna and Mackenzie, and you know it's just been amazing that the women have such great roles, courtesy of Hampton and uh, Michael, and uh, I think it, it's an incredible feat that Andrew and Broderick were able to bring this to fruition in such an incredible way, meaningful way to create a film that is such an experience for everybody, ex exciting ride that will uh, be long talked about afterwards, after they leave the theater. So I, I'm, I'm very, very pleased that the dream of my husband and myself came true, and the dream of this team uh, has come, to, come true in such an amazing way. Well, first of all, yeah, just piggybacking on that, Harrison, Ridley, Hampton, all agreed and decided that this was the time to make the film, that this was the story to tell, this was the way that those, the narrative would have evolved, that the world would have evolved. So, who might argue <laughs> with that? But the question I ask myself, I think, after that is, when you read the screenplay, is there a story to be told here? Is this, uh, does it stand on its own? Is there uh, something useful in here uh, and worth all this effort? And I, there was no doubt in my mind after reading it that those things were true. And then, you got your Denis Villeneuve, your Roger Deakins, uh, you know, this incredible cast, the incredible craftsmen that went, uh, you know, in Budapest that were building these environments. It just, it just kept uh, expanding. And, uh, um, you know, so many great, um, Storytellers manning the helm. Story was paramount on set. It was the every all all of the aesthetic choices came from story and character, and uh, it just instilled a great amount of confidence in me, and I felt very uh, you know challenged by it, but excited by the opportunity. Um. You know, a picture is worth a thousand words, and when you get on um, on a set that's uh, that there's been a lot of thought put into the visual aspects of, of that scene, you feel a support from from and and a, and you know what you don't have to do. 
you have to be there, of course, uh, for the other characters and, and to service the story. But so much is done in, in, in a visual way. It's, it it uh, certainly encourages uh, your confidence. And um, and the second part was: uh, Is there another role that I? Um, not that I can think of. <laughs> Uh, the good news is I'm a Canadian. So, how about the, the, the movie being a national treasure for the United States? <laughs> no, but the thing is that uh, it's, it's a movie that is, uh, I repeat, and it's true. It's a movie that uh, had a huge impact on me uh, for several reasons. When I saw it, uh, when it came out in the, in the theater, I was like, uh, at a time, a uh, young teenager, and uh, I was like hungry for strong science fiction, a mature science fiction, science fiction that was designed for adults and not for and, and not parody or B movies. Or, and and when I saw saw Blade Runner, it, it, it was really like a sincerely a movie that really impressed me for, for a lot of reasons. Um, and one of them is that uh, at the time I was starting to dream about the idea of uh, directing movies, and we can all agree, I think, that Dead Runner is by far one of the strong, is a very strong example of what uh, a movie can be when it's in the end of an author, you know. It was like, a, it's a director's movie. The, 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 the Empton. Uh, are you okay with that, what I'm saying right now? <laughs> no, but seriously, that what I'm saying is that it's really uh, the imprint of Ridley was uh, very powerful aesthetically, and uh, and uh, was as you rightly said, that was there was a before and an after. It really changed the nature of uh, uh, it inspired so much movies after. So how can you revisit a universe that has been? Copy uh, uh, or in that uh, universe that inspired so many movies after, and that was a, one of the biggest big challenge of making sure that uh, we will go back there uh, with uh, fresh eyes. And uh, I will say that uh, a lot of uh, one thing that why I one of the main thing I said yes is the screenplay. What Anton. I brought as, as ideas and what Michael Green had, had brought, that what I had brought together, there was a space, uh, necessary space for a director to, to bring his own imprint. There was like, a, so that I would say that, 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 that this completely was a huge help. And uh, I revisited all the drafts from Michael and the very early draft from Anton and they became my Bible. And, and uh, that's what I would say. <clears throat> yeah, I was looking for an opportunity to extend the audience's understanding of the character, um, to be part of the telling of the story. Um, uh, it had to be my part. The whole had to be uh, uh, something I really want to be involved in as well, not just my part. Uh, and I saw that uh, potential, and I and I also um, was anxious to work uh, with the people involved, with Denis, with Ryan. Um, so it, it, for me, it was a it was a, a great opportunity. So sorry, there was a bit of ego you're talking about. Oh, sorry. So the, 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 the idea was uh, to talk about my collaboration with Roger on this project. Yes, exactly. You returned uh, the, the, the... I will say right from the start, it's like, uh, as uh, someone said, a uh, uh, gentleman said earlier, it's, those are big uh, shoes to fill. You know? And, and uh, uh, when I, I said yes, right from the start, I, uh, I uh, said to me, uh, I need to surround myself with a very strong artist. And the first one, I, when I said yes, the first thing I did, the same day, I had a dinner at Roger's house and I asked him to get on board with me, which is, he, he, he said yes right away because he, uh, Roger and I were uh, dreaming about doing a science fiction movie together and uh, um, 
So what I did is that uh, the big difference with the movies I've done before is that I brought Roger very early in the process. Meaning that we started to have uh, uh, sessions, working sessions in Montreal for weeks, if not for months. We spent a few months in Montreal in a hotel room with two storyboard artists. And uh, we drew all the movies together, all the storyboards. But also, we designed the movies together. We, 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 uh, we figured out the laws. Of the, 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 the screenplay was giving us hints about what the world would be, but we needed to go more, uh, more specific. And, and, we, we did a lot. and then Dennis Gassner, the production designer, joined us. But then we created, uh, in, in those Montreal sessions, what will be the defined the laws from a sociological point of view, economic, geopolitic, uh, climate, uh, architecture, everything was designed uh, uh, in, in, uh, in those working sessions with Roger. And I'm really grateful. It was like, really like, uh, I made the movie with him all the way from day one until the, the very last uh, screening. You know. It's, uh, I owe him a lot. Yeah. The movie owe him a lot. The thing is, that, uh, uh, that what was different in this movie was to, uh, to start with somebody else's dream. I mean, I'm used to be the master of my the, the dream at the beginning. Now I was playing with uh, the ideas of Ridley Scott and Edton Fetcher. And and, uh, and one of the toughest things was, for me for this project was to bring back uh, Rick Decker, Harrison's character. And to my great relief, and, and uh, right from the start, I felt that Harrison wanted to, to be part of the creative process and to help me. I needed, I would not, not have been able to do it alone, you know. I needed a collaboration, a, a dialogue that, uh, and it, it, I think it's a dialogue that evolved uh, through time. At the beginning, uh, there was a long period of uh, silence and, and uncertainty. I mean, the, to, to how do we bring him back to life? What will be uh, his mental state? How, how will he be? Uh, I mean, been through 30 years uh, away from our eyes and, and, uh, and uh, so it's a process that, uh, and with all the actors, it's always the same. That I love to create with actors. Uh, it's the way I like to share, I think. I don't know if they agree, but I, that's the way I, that's my goal. I don't know why I said But my goal is to share creativity with them as much as possible. And uh, I think that's what I try to do with them again, as I will say. But for this time, it was uh, uh, specifically with Harrison, it was like crucial more than ever. Any of the cast want to add anything to that? You don't have to. They don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would, I would say that uh, um, there was uh, there was a period of, of um, uh, questioning, uh, as as Denny indicates, um, how much of the story to tell uh, in this space, uh, what the story was to tell about this. In that space between the last time you saw Deckard and we'll see him now, what, and what condition uh, we find him in, and uh, I found it uh, a real pleasure to work with uh, Denny's uh, imagination and uh, have him respect uh, the process, and we ended up uh, in a place that I think, I hope, uh, serves the film well. Uh, but I was also anxious uh, to um, I think that's all I want to say. Thank you. Anna? Yeah, yeah, I'm about to. <laughs> you know, every day felt to me, every day felt like it was the first day. It was really hard to get used to um, those sets and Ryan <laughs> and Denis and Roger and everyone. It was um, it was incredible. We we had a, an amazing playground to 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 play around. That we have a lot of we had a lot of freedom and building these characters that only exist in the future. I mean, you know, talking about it with Denis from the beginning was very interesting because we kind of, you know, just came up with our own rules and, and ideas and ways of making them, you know, um, just to be alive, I don't know. Um, so it was, yeah, it was
was praying. Yeah. Anyone else? Well, I think uh, if I can say something about the sets, uh, the sets for all of us were very overwhelming. Um, like I remember we used to talk about it a little bit before we went on to a new set. We ask you know the other person, what do you think this next set will look like? <laughs> and every time it was so overwhelming with something that you didn't, you wouldn't expect, and even like the extras that were in the sets, and you were like, what? But you felt like your own mind was such a, you know, a cliche, <laughs> of, of, you know, your own fantasy were so cliche in a sense. And um, yeah, I think for me, uh, it was very important to understand this new Blade Runner universe, this new language that we were speaking, you know, being able to understand what Roger and Denis and Dennis Gassner had created and, 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 and be able to add on to that as an actor was very important to all of us, I think. Thank you. I hear that. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to duck and watch it. <laughs> I should answer it. <laughs> yeah, Denis, uh, Denis uh, always says, uh, he reminds her of Audrey Hepburn on, on acid. <laughs> and uh, that is a thing. I mean, it was so much fun uh, to play her. Um, I think I did a lot of uh, uh, training for it. So I, 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 uh, the day after I heard, I got the part. Uh, Andrew Kosov has a wonderful friend that he trains with. Um, is a, she's a world champion uh, triathlete. Leslie Patterson, this muscular but tiny piece of dynamite that just got me through every single day of training, six hours a day, six days a week. You know, my Sundays I would be on the couch, heat packs, ice packs everywhere, not being able to move. Uh, but it, it, it paid off. I mean, I, I gained those pounds of muscle and, and I really felt that I met the character while going through that pain and, and that discipline. And, and, and it was lovely to meet her, actually. I, the whole world opened up to me, and uh, yeah, there was there was there, there was so many things to play with. You know, you could, there was satire, there was humor. She's like a fashionista. She's um, <laughs> a vulnerable. Well, she she wants Nianer's uh, approval, like a daughter to a father. Um, she's like a kid, you know, in a grown-up world, and. Uh, uh, trying to control everything, trying to be perfect. And that was just something we all can relate to in this world, I think, you know, with all the social media around us. Um, and um, I loved to take that on. Yeah. Well, I, 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 first of all, there were um, a variety of endings. <laughs> <laughs> and it ended with uh, Ridley's final cut, and uh, I was much happier with that version than the one with the, uh, with the voiceover and the uh, sailing into the sunset. And uh, uh, I've, I've thought about it uh, frequently because I've been re reminded of how, <laughs> reminded of how, how uh, many filmmakers uh, took inspiration from that, from that film, and how much it defined um, uh, a certain uh, kind of visual storytelling.